title of this video is, Do We Have Two Sons? And I am not referring to the photographs or videos you may have seen of the um, observatory in the Antarctic or on the top of Hawaii or in Japan or wherever showing these images of two suns hovering in the sky. Um, I've seen those videos. They're very interesting, very compelling. Um, I can't help but think they must be a hoax because if there was an extra sun hovering in the sky, we would all see it. Um, but who knows? Maybe somehow it's you know hiding at the bottom of Antarctica, and and uh, and so um, nobody else can see it. Um, also, there's the the, uh, the the primary theory is actually that um, this is the planet Nibiru, planet X, um, and it's only visible at certain times and and certain places. Um, so, uh, but that is not the supposed second sun that I'm referring to. So what I'm referring to, and I discussed this in, a, in another video, is the precession of the equinoxes. And the precession of the equinoxes is a um, roughly 26,000 year cycle in which the uh, constellations in the sky, the star stars uh, in the night sky, um, move in a, in a uh, 26,000 year cycle um, so that the sun on the uh, equinoxes, the fall and spring equinoxes, um, rises into uh, one of the 12 uh, constellations, one of the 12 signs of the zodiac. So currently we're in the age of Pisces because the sun rises into the constellation of Pisces and we're um, on the cusp of moving into the age of Aquarius. Um, now the current theory is that this, this uh, movement of the zodiac, the constellations through the sky in this 26,000 year cycle, is the result of some kind of a wobble in the Earth's axis that um, that makes it so that uh, it appears as if the stars themselves are are moving, but it's actually uh, something something to do with the uh, slight wobble in the Earth's axis. Now there is a uh, astrophysicist, Walter Cruttenden, and I'll go ahead and put his uh, name on the video here, so you can do some further research yourself if you're interested in interested in that. And um, I uh, watched an interview with him, a couple of interviews with him several years ago, in which he is exploring the possibility that the precession of the equinoxes is actually caused by our movement through the solar system around the second sun. And that might sound completely fantastic, but keep in mind that this is not a sun that is close by. It's not a sun that uh, is anywhere near our solar system at the moment. It is a, another star that is a long, long ways away, and we make this huge 26,000-year elliptical orbit around it. And um, so I'll just say that the, the star that he proposes may likely be the star is the star Sirius. And uh, anyone who has done any reading on um, Egypt knows that they were quite obsessed with the star Sirius, um, as well as uh, lots of other cultures. It's one of the brighter stars in the sky. Um, so uh, he's been doing some, some research uh, trying to determine if that is the case. Um, now... Uh, on his website, he mentions a study that NASA did a number of years ago in which they were trying to determine the speed of the solar system through space. Now, this isn't something that's easy to determine because um, what do you compare yourself to when you're, when you're talking about a solar system is, is, isn't something. It's almost entirely empty space with a couple of planets and the sun in it. Um, and so determining how fast we're moving in space compared to the rest of the cosmos um, isn't easy to do. So they sent a, um, a satellite up, or a spaceship, or uh, I forget exactly, but uh, they sent something up into space that had a bunch of gyroscopes on it. Very uh, finely tuned, extremely, you know, highest technology gyroscopes that uh, somehow were going to determine um, the speed of our solar system through space. And so th this uh, study took quite a long time. Finally, they bring the gyroscopes back down in the satellite or, or whatever it was that they sent them up there in, and uh, compute all the, the calculations, and they came up th with this number that was way bigger than they expected. And it turns out that this number actually corresponded with what Walter Cruttenden said, um, what sort of speed we would have to be moving through space in order to um, create this 26,000-year uh, elliptical orbit around another, another star. Um, and so what NASA did was they scrapped the the experiment. They said, oh, our gyro's messed up, um, we got incorrect information, our computations are wrong, um, you know, and so they just scrapped the whole experiment and, and, and that was it, and, and you heard nothing more from it. 
So if you're interested at all in this in this concept, feel free to look up Walter Cruttenden or um, you know just Google uh, "Are we in an elliptical orbit around Sirius?" or that's S I R I U S Sirius. Um, uh, feel free to do your own research. There's some interesting stuff out there. Um, nothing is uh, conclusive, but it's a pretty fascinating concept um, to think that we may have this other star that we rotate around. And if you think about the concept of um, ages of dark and light, um, this could correspond with when we are closer to or farther away from this other sun of ours. So when we get um, closer to the star, if it's serious, then there would be a literal age of light and that we would have a second sun shining more light on us. And then when we're further away, then we're, you know, um, then it's the age of darkness. So pretty interesting concept. Um, and uh, personally, it resonates with me based on what I've read, but uh, um, who knows? Uh, the, the research is still ongoing.